this video, I want to demonstrate how you could do a summary of a data set using a query and also then getting a total um, of the data with the query. So I have a, a, a formula on my clipboard. I'm going to paste it in to save a little time. I'll go back and look at this. So this is my sales data. I'll show you here this data set I set up as a named range sales data. So this is the data set I'm looking at. And I'm looking at E, my, my brand, and I'm counting E. I'm getting an average of the sales amount, and I'm getting a sum of the sales amount. Now, what I'd like to be able to do, number one, I think would like to clean up the uh, labels and, and, and we also want to format this as currency. So let's do that real quick. And um, finally, I've pasted in uh, this cleaning up. I'm, I had the group by E, but then I'm going to label count E as a number of sales, average F is the average sale amount, and the sum F as the total sales by brand. But what I'd like to also do here is I'd like to format. Let's try a formatter. Let's format um, the average F. Let's format average F as, let's do currency. So dollar, uh, and then we can use a pound, pound, comma, pound, pound, zero, dot, zero, zero. Let's end that, and let's see what we get. So great, we've got that set up that way. So we should be able to take that format um, and be able to paste this format average F with a comma, sum F. And now notice that we've got our currency the way we'd like it. So what I'd like to do now, and there's a couple of ways you could do this, but I'd like to know what this total is. And I could highlight that and go ahead and do a sum and get my 481,153. I could highlight this and I could get an average um, of that and I could do it that way, but what would happen if I manually put that in there, and let's say I add a different brand, let's say this is dynamic data, and I add a brand like, uh, you know, I'll just uh, add uh, Nabisco. Now, when I add Nabisco, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a reference error because I put my sum total here. And now I have another row of data. So let me undo, well, let me, let me uh, just move these down. I'd have to move these down, and then my data would come back. So that would be the problem with doing a manual sum. So let's go ahead and undo that and undo that. And we can see that that's still working. So what I'd like to be able to do instead of this, I would like to be able to have an automatic sum. So let's see how we might be able to do that. In order to do this, we're going to use some array literals to, to uh, um, stack this data and build a a title here called totals. So let's see how we could do that. If we want to do an array literal, it equals curly bracket. And I'm going to start with the word total, totals maybe like that. And then I'm going to do a comma. And I'm going to do, uh, just to show you, I'm going to do a T, comma, R. Oops, we need to. Uh, quote, R, and comma, and then let's do a E. And let's finish this out with a curly bracket. 
and this builds an array, totals t r e. So I'm going to use this array literal function with this query so that I can build a row here that would allow me to build a total with, um, so actually let's just, uh, let's move this over here. So that, we're going to build that and we're going to add the totals in here, but instead of T, R, and E, we're going to build in these pieces of the query. So let me, let me quickly grab a copy of that and paste it and then we'll go over it. So I've pasted this formula in and notice I've begun this formula with a curly bracket because I'm building a virtual array. So my first, uh, when you use a, um, a virtual array, you separate your row, your columns with a comma and your rows with a semicolon. So I've built my query and then semicolon, now I'm doing totals, and this is a new, uh, a new virtual row, totals, and then instead of the example we had done where it was ERF, we are doing query sales data, select count B, and we're using a count, a label count B blank, because if you just do a select count B, you're going to get a label on the top of it and it's going to break this. So we're going to remove the label and then the next column is going to be sales data. Select the average and again remove the label. Third column, sales data. Query the sales data, get the sum F, label it that way. And then we close out the query and we have to close out two curly brackets the first curly bracket here and the second curly bracket there. And if I hit enter on this, then notice what I currently have is totals. We have our total sign and, and now I could do some work on, on, on cleaning this up. Maybe I would uh, you know, make this bold. I might make this bold and I might do something like this and, and format some alternating colors um, and remove the header. And there we go. So now I've, I've got this. Oh, and one last thing we didn't have in here is our formatting of the, of the data. So we could have added the formatting out. We've shown that earlier. So I could, in this case, just, uh, I could go ahead and maybe a simpler way to do this is just to select columns J and K and format them as currency. And now we can see our full data and the sums. The average, the sum of how many, the average, and the sum of the total. Uh, and we can check that here because we can click here and we can see that our, our sum is 481,153. But a very quick way, one formula, I have a, uh, I might do something like this. I was uh, building this and maybe uh, go ahead and um, maybe I would do something like that. Clean it up however you'd want to format it. Now you can see the data um, with a single formula. And again, we're, we're, we're able to do that. Now, again, the reason this is better than um, doing a manual sum here, if I were to <coughs> change your brand again back to Nabisco, notice Nabisco now fits in there, and my total is added to the end. Might be a reason not to uh, do any of your formatting. Let's unformat that. And um, because you end up with, uh, in fact, let's get rid of all those uh, as well. This way you can see if I change this to, you know, nonsense, again, I can have a dynamic table now that will allow me to have a subtotal line even if the data is changing. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of those. 
So I hope that's helpful. It's, uh, it's a great way to use a single formula. Uh, we're going covering a lot of things here. We're, we're labeling. Um, <clears throat> we're doing some aggregation. But then we're also using this nice function of building an array literal so I can build a row showing my totals that is dynamically adjusting as the data here might change.